But I can kind of start. I am J2, uh, and obviously, again, uh, Shane Valentine is the current chair of the commission. John Toon, who is a commissioner uh, with a lot of subject matter expertise on this, and then Isabella, who is very familiar with her time on the commission. Um, this is an integrated pest management policy. This was discussed many times through many park and rec uh, meetings. This ultimately at the last park and rec meeting was uh, voted and approved to be recommended to the board for adoption. Um, uh, again, I think my point here is just stressing that this has gone through many rounds of review at a commission level, uh, noticed, agendized, uh, a lot of feedback, a lot of refinement, um, and a lot of input from you know, what are now two commissioners that are both uh, have a lot of professional experience in park management uh, at agencies other than this one. Um, so I don't know if uh, Shane, you want to touch on this, or John, if you have something you would like to kind of add before any specific questions may come up. I would just like to add, you know, uh, this is something that was started with Isabella when she was chair. Um, and, you know, the, just for us to discuss and answer any questions, you know, I'm glad that John was able to come and John Campos, the new uh, commissioner, both uh, really well versed in this and really helped us understand and craft this. Uh, I think it's something that, you know, as a resident, I'm proud to say that this is something that I support and recommend. Um, it was a lot of education. Um, I was against the hot button topic of this IPM, uh, which is the use of, of Roundup when we first did it, when it first came up for discussion. Uh, but working with John uh, and learning from John and now, and then now John Campo, uh, I understand how it is used, I understand why it is used, I understand of how we, we put it together and that in the fact that we are a community service district of this size actually have an integrated pest management policy that you can stand behind and would limit, identify and limit the use of those um, to specific instances and where we can use them, when we can't use them, that it actually uh, encompasses uh, not only staff, but any contractors that we have. I think it, it covers everything, it's very thoughtful, um, it's very transparent. Um, you know, there has been you know, some discussions, if you read through the notes of, you know, there are some other uh, municipalities like Richmond or Berkeley that say that they are exemptions in it and so it, it's kind of misleading and I think that ours is very forward um, and like I said transparent. The, the one thing I'd just like to add before I have John um, talk to her a little bit better than me um, is that I, I think that there's a, there's a possibility that some members of the public will have a knee-jerk reaction um, to that we even we don't outright ban um, use of uh, Roundup in this instance. Um, and I think that we would need to craft proactive messaging around it. And um, I'm happy to work at, as the commission if we wanted to draft, let's say, a letter. I mean, it's all in here. I know we've, we've kind of beat this um, for the last several months. But I, I think something that's a little more forward um, and to express what it is, how it is, how we'll use it, how we'll not use it. Um, how limited we've used it, we haven't used it for a year, you know, all those things. Um, I just think we should be able, we might want to consider a little more proactive, some type of letter or statement in advance of this if you, if the board does adopt this IPN policy. Thank you, Shane. John, did you have anything you'd like to add? I, I, I guess I would just say that it is just a policy it doesn't require any action in the field you just because you it's it's just it's more of an outline to i think it as shane said it, it clarifies why you make your actions that you make it shows you to do your you know your due diligence and it, it's a process but it's just it's just a guideline, 
and I and I think it's important to have. I think that there's a a lack of resources in public entities that you know you can't always do things a certain way, but you also have a responsibility to maintain infrastructure, and so it's. I think you just it, it's a, a guideline to help you achieve those goals, and there'll always be. I mean, like tonight, there'll be a yay and a nay, but I think it's sound and enforceable. And you know, if you look at it logically and responsibly, it, it's something you can stand behind. Great, thank you, John. And. Uh, at this time, I'd like to, to thank you in particular for spending so much time crafting this policy. I think it's been quite comprehensive, and, and I know you input you know significant amount of time, and, and myself and I feel that the district are very appreciative for that, and as well as uh, you know thank the PNR Commission for for their effort on it, and um, also for the contributions that the Campo was able to bring in as well. So thank you both. Um, so at this time, sorry, Stephen, we're not at public comment yet. Um, so at, at this time, are there any clarifying questions that the board has of either staff or the Parking Rec Commission regarding the IPM policy? Okay. Uh, then we'll move on into public comment. Stephen? Yeah, I don't understand why we have. Uh, you're going to use road sides and set sides, herb sides, etc., in open space. I mean, is that really necessary? We've got a lot of open space, and I'm, I personally, I want to see us uh, to tread very lightly in that area. Yeah, uh, absolutely, go ahead, John. I, I don't think there's anything in there that mandates use anywhere. But it's just a uh, guideline. But it, it, it allows look at the it allows you. So I'm just thinking that I, I understand why you want to use it, but let's let's kind of narrow it to where you're going to use it. That's well, all. Uh, of course, everything is site specific. But when you look at the state of California and you know, the number of invasive weeds that are now in California, right. the state is mandated to control those weeds to allow them to proliferate. Not only does economic damage, but it's environmental damage. So if you have an invasive species that needs to be controlled, this is an outline to how you can go about that. No one's going to run up and down the hillsides <laughs> spraying. No, I know. But as well, Stephen, whatever, Stephen, for their this, for the purpose it's not of this back and forth. So, it. so it's it's a guideline and and it includes open space. They're responsible to maintain the open space. You need a guideline of how to do it. That way you don't have that issue of just someone going off, my opinion, do this, and going out and do it. So now that he's, he's, he's responded to me, can I respond to him? Or, I mean, but you, you're basically comment. allowing him no, Stephen, to edit my public, comments. Stephen, public comment is not a back and forth. Public, you, had, you had a comment, and John has addressed it. I'll, I'll further address it by saying that it's, as, as Shane and both John have, have mentioned, it's, it's only in, in rare instance does it allow, only as necessary. So it's not anything that is going to be, you know, it, as, as, as the park and rec director can, can attest to, none of this has been used in in any recent time, and, and so it's it's not. I, th I think the concerns that you're bringing up are, are not going to be what what it's going to be. So, uh, Linda, or sorry, uh, Shane, did you have something to say? Uh, just, just to like clarify of the language is that this is our toolbox. Yeah. And it says we have these things basically order and do it, so that we go from least invade, least to most. With some certified train, all those things, right? So it's not that we go straight to spraying, you know, and even if we go to the there, there's so many steps. And then, as John has educated us, um, 
is that then there's also certain kinds of winters. You don't just do it willy nilly. You do it when it's a certain growing season, or if it's dying, you don't do it. And, you know, so it's, it's very nuanced. And so it's this, because of that, I think this helps us so that those instances, someone running up in the open space, spraying haphazardly, will not happen with this. Where it, without one, it can. So we didn't have one before. Okay. And that means anyone can go and grab a thing around up and go out to the hill. So now we have guidelines and a toolbox in which to use. So it didn't stop us before. Now this is the restriction. Before we had, it was, it was fair game. <coughs> Thank you, Shane. Linda? Oh, all I wanted to say was I had attended the Park and Rec meetings where this issue had been discussed over several months. And I really appreciate the way it was discussed and expanded, and I think um, the Park and Rec Commission did a great job in coming up with the final results. Thank you, John and John. Thank you. Stephen? The open space needs special consideration if it's to remain open space. I, I appreciate what you're doing, and I understand it's, you want responsible policy, I agree. It's just that because you haven't, uh, you haven't set aside the open space under a certain management uh, capacity. You're basically giving, you're, you're giving the green light to, to go do that. Now, I know that's not the intent, but that is what that policy says. Okay. Uh, moving on, it, I'll now entertain a motion to... Motion to approve. Is there second. a second? Motion and... Director Shea, may you come green? And now, discussion amongst the board. Go ahead. I think it's a well thought out. It took several months, several long discussions. I was party to a couple of them myself. And uh, it's taken a lot of time to finally get to us to approve. And I really appreciate the work that was done. And I have no problem with this at all. For Okay. Yes, um, I think it's an important step towards a uh, responsibility that this board has to put more policies and procedures that clarify what we do in as professional a manner as we possibly can before we all retire. I think it's an important step. I think it's well thought out. I was very, very, uh, I attended several of the meetings where it was discussed towards the end. Um, and I was impressed by the fact that this was brought forward by professionals um, who we are um, lucky to have on our commission and by the fact that um, in my experience owning a cottage back on a lake in Maine, I'd gone through several of these um, pest control companies and the best ones were the ones that said, Number one, we're licensed to do just about anything right up to the lake. Number two, we use the least toxic, you know, solution. And we're here to protect your family, families that are staying with you, animals, etc. cetera, um, because they knew what they were doing. They had a policy, they were regulated, and um, this is a step forward for this district. Thank you, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Isabella? Um, I would like to thank John Tion and John Campo and Shane for all the work that they did on policy. Um, it couldn't have happened without them. Um, it's fabulous that we have such expertise um, on the commission. Um, and the way the policy is laid out, really, it communicates that we will start with the least invasive or least impactful um, way to control weeds, such as mulch. And then only if that does not prove successful in protecting our infrastructure, our um, um, property, then we'll move to the next step. Under no circumstances are the uh, non-exempt um, pesticides to be applied near playgrounds or in playgrounds uh, on uh, in uh, 
uh, highly frequented public spaces around the community center. So I think we we have taken greatest care to make sure that uh, both pets, uh, both pets and and people are safe, and therefore I feel very comfortable in that. And again, thank you very much. And I, I'd like to also throw in. Again, to thank you as well, Deboa, for your work and your time um, on, on the Afghan policy as, as Commission Chair, as much of this was, was being crafted. So um, I'll just make it short. I fully agree with all the comments that the Commission has, has said to this, as well as the, the rest of the board. We've been going over this for quite some time. I feel that we've gone through beyond our due diligence and, and have allowed extensive opportunity for public to weigh in and, and be involved in the process. So uh, again, thank you to everyone involved. Um, if there's no other comments, I'll call the question to order. All those in favor of approving item J2? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimously approved. 